Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing April the 13th with me, Patrick Munley. With large parts of the US economy remaining in lockdown as the number of cases and deaths from COVID-19 continues to rise, market watchers are expecting the economic data flow to worsen. Initial jobless claims will once again be watched, in particular due to the timeliness of the data for any new records. Meanwhile, re retail sales on Wednesday will likely come in line with consensus, which is currently forecasting a 1.4% monthly decline in retail sales across the US. As consumers have held back on spending due to the lockdowns, job losses and widespread uncertainty, the substantial impact on the labour market will also be reflected in the fall as risk aversion leads to higher saving tendencies Industrial production data for March will also be released next week, giving uh, insight into the extent of the impact on both production and consumer spending, as are some regional Fed surveys for April. From a technical perspective, the dollar index is testing a uh, support zone here at the 99.32 to 98.64. If buyers emerge here, look for a move up to test the 101.60 to 101. 198 area as the next upside objective. However, if we fail to find support above this 98.64, look for a move down to develop through the price cycle lows at 98.30 en route to a equality downside objective at 96.21. Whilst we're talking about the dollar, let's check in with gold. Gold is up, looking to test price cycle highs now towards the 1703 level. Uh, watching for any momentum divergence to develop as this could precede a, uh, a pullback to retest the 1600 area as support. However, whilst we are trading above the 1567 level, these pullbacks should be uh, considered constructive and, uh, and buyers are likely to emerge at key levels as we look to break through price cycle highs and ultimately get a test of the resistance cluster up towards 1751 to 1765. That's going to be the next real key decision point for the markets. Uh, in the Eurozone, industrial output and inflation uh, data is due for February. Uh, will likely garner a little interest given it precedes the COVID-19 outbreak across Europe. February German data released last week provided some more signs that the industrial sector had turned the corner in 2020. Although this is somewhat irrelevant after the March manufacturing PMI data suggests production slumped at an annual rate in excess of 10% at the end of the first quarter. Preliminary prices data showed a half percentage point slide in the HICP rate of inflation for March. And market watchers expect a further deterioration in Friday's readings. Underlying inflation rates should also moderate over the coming quarters given the deteriorating economic environment, ensuring that the European Central Bank monetary policy stance will remain exceptionally accommodative for an extended period of time. From a technical perspective, the euro dollar is uh, testing uh, resistance here at the 109.60 to 109.87. As this area contains, look for a pullback to test support back to 108.50. If buyers don't step back in at 108.50, look for a quick retest of 101.70 en route to a test of 106.29. However, if we do find support at the 108.50, look for a move up to test uh, the next resistance zone at the 110.69 to 110.83. In the UK, BRC retail sales data for March will provide insight into the coronavirus impact on consumption. Store sales are set to plummet, although there could be some upside in online sales. Meanwhile, the Bank of England releases the credit condition survey for the first quarter. The data collection period will have been primarily in March and will cover almost the whole month. This will therefore provide some useful insight as to whether the unprecedented action by the central bank and UK government to provide extraordinary credit support has increased the availability of loans, particularly in the corporate sector. From a technical perspective, the pound sterling continues to test the 124.80. We note some divergence developing in the momentum studies here, so we could see a pullback early in the week to test uh, the equality objective at 121.90. If buyers don't step back in here, look for a deeper pullback to test the 119.50 to 120 area. 
Here we will be looking for bullish reversal patterns to set long positions, ultimately targeting a move up towards the 128 handle. Only a failure below 119.50 would concern this bullish bias and see a deeper pullback to test 116.50. In Asia, the markets will focus on China economic data releases to assess the COVID-19 impacts. While the GDP results for the first quarter will be closely watched, investors will also pay attention to the monthly data for figures such as industrial output, trade, investment and retail sales for further impacts and insights into the impact of the extent of economic weakness that could have persisted through March. Specifically in Japan, the key data of note will be Friday's industrial production reading. Uh, the final print for February is expected to be weak and the outlook is expected to be particularly worrisome. From a technical perspective, as the dollar yen holds this 108 level, look for another leg of upside to test this 110.50 to 116.69 uh, area. Watching for bearish reversal patterns in this zone to set short positions, ultimately looking for a move down to test into the 105.60 area. However, if we fail to, to see these bearish reversal patterns emerge here, I'd be looking for a retest of 112 en on, on route then to a likely test up into the 114 handle. In Australia, the only uh, key release uh, that's going to be focused on next week really is going to be the, uh, the unemployment data on Wednesday. Uh, probably the economy will have tr uh, transitioned towards significant job losses, which would fit the pattern of other major developed com uh, economies. However, timing of the survey limits the impact of the shutdowns in March, so market watchers expect to see a, a more significant hit in April. From a technical perspective, um, the Australian dollar is uh, is testing some pivotal resistance at the 63.50 area. If, uh, if we do see a pullback here early in the week, look for trendline support at the 62.30 area to, uh, to, to, to re-encourage uh, buyers and ultimately look for a move up to test the 64.30 to 64.90. This will be the next key decision point for the market. However, if we fail to find support at the trend line, look for a deeper pullback into the, one, uh, into the 61 handle. Again, as this area contains the, uh, the correction, we could see a more complex correction develop and retest the current highs at the 63.50 before pulling back once again to the 61 before finally getting that push up to the 64.90 and potentially as high as 66.95. At this stage, only a failure below uh, 59.77 would really concern this bullish bias. Finally, in Canada, the uh, macroeconomic data will include an unprecedented flash or now cast estimate for March GDP growth and Q1 GDP growth, which is going to be released on Wednesday. Uh, market watchers uh, are looking for the economy to have contracted uh, in the 3 to 4% month over month range in March using income pro uh, production accounts and uh, 2 to 3% range in Q1 uh, using the conventional expenditure accounts. Uh, but much of the data lacks, uh, or, or much of the data collected, sorry, is going to be around uh, the month of February uh, for most releases. And March, really, the only key release you're going to have from that perspective is the labour data and housing starts. Since these figures are going to be released on the same day as the BOC, uh, the Bank of Canada meeting, it's likely they'll influence the tone of that meeting. Bank of Canada's work is by no means done as the as its pace of actions continue to slip behind the Federal Reserves. While some areas of market functioning have improved, some have not, and there is room for targeted stimulus likely to be announced after Wednesday's monetary policy meeting. From a technical perspective, uh, the Canadian dollar continues to test support at the 139.10 area. As we find bids uh, above 130. Uh, just below 139, look for a, uh, a double correction to ensue here and we could test back up into the uh, 143 area before finally getting another leg lower to meet the downside objective at 136. If we don't catch these early bids at or just below 139, then we can anticipate that we'll see this test of the uh, 136.10 to 136.90 area earlier in the week. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing April the 13th.